If you watched the previous video on the distance to point function and the distance to object function, you'd be wondering, are there other ways to check distances? And the answer is yes, actually. There's a way to check a distance between two points, and I've got an object here that I've called point player. Now, inside, I'm allowed to move them, but the relevant code is point to point here that I've, I've just written out. So I've got point distance, and point distance is a function that is looking for an x and y value for the first point and an x and y value for the second point. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to check from the calling objects x and y position in the room and then I'm going to go to object box. If you remember the red box, I'm going to go to its x and y. So this is going to be similar to checking distance to object and just putting object box in the parentheses. Now my second distance is once again coming from the center point, my origin point. I'll just pop in here, I'll show you. Right here, that's what it's going to be checking from, this origin point. That's important to understand here. And I'm going to go to the middle of the room again, so that's half the width and half the height. And then I'm just going to draw it out to the screen. So let me pop into the room and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's the room. And as you can see, I have zero as my distance to the center of the room, and the box distance is 160. So let's compare this to the last video, which was distance to point. If you remember, when I move the player, it still says that I have zero distance to the center of the room, because that function checks for a collision. It checks whether or not the bounding box overlaps the point. This function checks point and point. So if I move ever so slightly, look at that. I'm still overlapping the center point of the room, but I'm actually getting a value returned to me. I'm 11.31 pixels away from the center. Look at that, I can be four pixels away. So that's more accurate, but it's not checking for a collision, technically. Now, if you remember when I checked for a collision between the two boxes using distance to object, it would always cycle between the nearest one. This one does not. If you notice, this is the box that's being checked. I'm zero distance from this box, and once again, it's origin point to origin point. That's how I have it set up. If I move closer to this box, though, I don't receive a smaller number. It's not checking this box at all even though I did tell it to check object box X, object box Y. The reason for this is instance ordering. Simply put, when GameMaker puts all your objects or instances of your objects into a room, it puts it together in an order, and each of these instances gets a number. This is just looking for the box with the first value, which would be the lowest value. So this means this box was made first, and then this box was made. So when this player object is checking for the distance to a box, it just found the first one on the list and was like, oh, that must be what you're talking about. So although it's more accurate because you're checking point to point, if you want to check an object, it's technically less accurate because it's not going to check all objects or instances of objects in a room. For that, you may have to input the instance ID, and we haven't gotten into that yet, so don't worry about that. This is just an example of another way to check distance to points. Now I have another example for you. I've set up a second room that's just going to draw a line randomly in the room, and then it's going to show you the distance between the two points of this, well, I guess line segment, technically. So in my draw event, all I've got is I'm just drawing the line out from the first point's x and y position, that's point 1x, point 1y, to the second point, x and y. And then I'm going to color it, so it's going to go from white to lime green, just to give it kind of a little bit of a color to show you which one's the start point and which one's the end point. And then I've drawn some little circles around the end points, so you know where the line segment starts and ends. Here's what this looks like. So here we go. Now as you can see, white is where the line segment starts, green's where it ends, and there we go. This is the distance in pixels, 395.99 pixels. And I've set up this room 
to be able to be restarted whenever I press R, and it'll just draw a new line randomly. See? So here we go, look, the, the distance between this point and this point, 652. We got 351, we got 185, and it keeps going like that. We get smaller ones, bigger ones. Whatever we want, I've made it random. But the point is to show that if you want to check the distance between two points, you can use point underscore distance. That's the function and it's really easy to use. Now, distances aside, you might want to know the angle of a line. The angle of a line is called direction in GameMaker. And the zero degree of our angle, or direction, is the x-axis of our room. And I'll show you what I mean. This function I'm using to just draw a horizontal line, so you know where the zero degree is. And if I uncomment this, we're just going to draw out what that degree is, or direction. Okay, so now that we're in the room, you can see I'm still drawing a line, starting at the white circle and going to the green circle. But this time I'm checking the angle, or direction. The x-axis is always your zero degree or 180 if you're going this direction, but it's your zero degree marker. So this angle is 274 degrees, which means it's gone whoop, all the way around. So we're, we're, we're tracking that whole angle. It starts on our zero angle, goes all the way around. I can pick a new one just by restarting the room. Now we've got a 67 degree angle. So here it is, it's just this little acute angle. If you guys know a little bit about trigonometry, you know, here's your little acute angle. 90 degrees would be like this. No problem. Let's get a new angle. There we go. We got an, opt an obtuse one at 103. So there we go. Really simple way to get the direction of a line. So you're saying, well, how, how is this useful? Well, I'm going to show you in some future videos, but let's say you're doing a top-down shooter, because this is a really good example of it, or even a tower defense game. And you want this to be your little player, your little guy, and he wants to shoot around in a 360 degree arc. Well, you're going to need to know degrees, or at least Game Maker's going to need to know them, and you're going to have to call upon them with a function. And here's how you're going to do that. You can have your guy follow the mouse wherever it's going, and fire bullets at different directions, and, well, that direction's going to be based on this direction right here. This being zero, this being 33.86, this one is 346.12, and this one's 16, and so on and so forth. So now you know that GameMaker is capable of telling you the distance between two points, the distance between objects, the distance between an object and a point, and the degree of that line that's being drawn, even if it's an imaginary line. But of course, you're going to need some more stuff to put it all together to make some really cool games. The beauty of functions is putting functions on functions on functions. And then you just make a really cool game and everyone thinks you're a wizard. But our spell book isn't complete yet. So I've got some more videos coming up that will show you even more ways to manipulate angles or directions and lengths or distances.